As we enter the Explorer section of our class, we're going to shift our focus from data to learn how to implement a trading partner and process acknowledgements. In this section, we will learn about the trading partner creation and the ISA envelope. We'll learn how to create a functional acknowledgement, a 997. A functional acknowledgement is a receipt that is sent back to the trading partner with their respective format, letting them know that the document was received. We're also going to discuss the various communication methods used in EDI. Let's begin by discussing the EDI envelope, focusing on how they are parsed and created in Boomi. EDI envelopes identify header and summary from one or more business transactions. The data usually includes information about transaction types, date and time of processing, trading partner identification codes, and the total transaction numbers for summary reporting. A Boomi process can parse or create envelope data based on Boomi supported EDI standards, X12, Edifact, HL7. For all inbound EDI transactions, you can route and validate by trading partner. The Atomsphere process extracts the envelope information so the configuration and mapping focus on the core business data. For outbound EDI transactions, Atomsphere can auto-generate and attach your EDI envelopes to send finalized EDI files to your trading partners. Before we can begin our business scenario, we need to ask ourselves the following questions. Do you need to send acknowledgement transactions or any outbound EDI data with a Boomi auto-generated envelope back to your trading partner? Does the structure need to be validated and tracked via the official EDI standard as it enters or leaves the Boomi process? Well, if the answer is no, you can use a standard connector instead of a trading partner. Standard connectors such as AS2 Client, AS2 Shared Server, Disk, FTP, HTTP Client, and Web Services Server. However, if the answer is yes, then you need to explore the following use case to learn how to configure the required information for the EDI sender and receiver. Let's review the business use case for this section of training. As before, we are Dell Boomi consultants assigned with the task of completing a purchase order and 850 integration. Our company, Walgetz, purchases products from Boomi. Now remember, in past activities, all of Walgetz's purchase orders were completed via email. Today, we are using the same process and we're going to expand it for Walgetz to systematically exchange documents with Boomi. Walgetz will send a purchase order transaction that is going to be stored in the inbound folder of the FTP server. The purchase order is then translated into a MySQL database. However, Walgetz has requested a functional acknowledgement, a 997B return, so Boomi will send the outbound file to the outbound folder on the file server for Walgetz to retrieve. This is the process we will update during the Explore section of our class. Notice the EDI is now being retrieved via FTP and we have a trading partner. We have two branches, one for documents and the other for acknowledgements. Let's begin with the trading partner. The Component Explorer allows you to create a new trading partner component in the desired folder. The trading partner component can be configured for your company, which in this case is Boomi, or your trading partner, which is Walgetz. The start shape is where you define your trading partner standard. Click on Add My Company Standard to display the company standards. This is used to add the My Company trading partners for any of the X12, Edifact, HL7, Custom, or RosettaNet document standards needed in the process. When used in the start shape, this selects the document standards for the inbound process. For our class, we will be using one standard of X12. The communication method is used to select the communication protocol. The five available methods are 
AS2, DISC, FTP, HTTP, MLLP, or SFTP. We can only select one, so in our case we're going to use FTP to pull over the file seated on our FTP server. When the communication method is defined in the start shape, it is used to select the communication method for the inbound data, which allows only one inbound method per process. The trading partner, start shape, defines the My Company. For our class, My Company is Boomi, and we have created a trading partner named Boomi, which we'll examine in our slides. Our class will focus on Walgets as the trading partner. The start shape is configured. Click on the hyperlink, in our case Boomi, to set up the trading partner. When configuring My Company, we will define it with the classification of This is My Company and give it a unique identifier. The identifier is arbitrary, but a best practice is to use the same name as the trading partner itself. Organization is an optional field which sets a predefined organization for the trading partner to use organized settings, such as multiple document standards for the same organization, and share common information, such as con common contact information for the organization. In this field, Specify the organization component which has been previously set up, defined, or create a new organization component. For our class, we do not have a predefined organization, so we will leave the field blank. Let's take a look at the X12 Standards tab next. The tab has three dropdowns, one for ISA identifier options, ISA version control options, and GS version control options. The information to complete these sections is contained in the first two lines of your EDI file where the receiver information is stored. The next few slides will review it in detail. All of the information is contained in the envelope, which is the first two lines of the data file. For our class, it will be displayed below the screenshot. ISA01 is the first field, and it is described as the qualifier. ASA02 is the ID. In our case, the qualifier is 00, meaning that there's no authorization present. ISA03 and ISA04 contain the security information. Once again, we have nothing present. The interchange ID is what the sender and the receiver, you and Walgets, agree to embed in your EDI envelope. A general rule of thumb is that the sender is always identified first and then the receiver. So we are receiving, so we will be using the second set of numbers. To set the ISA version and control standard, you need to provide the following information. ISA 11 is the interchange standard ID. This will always be you, as this is the US EDI standard. ISA 12 is the interchange version. This relates to the major version of the EDI standard. ISA 14 is the interchange acknowledge requested, the sender's code for requesting an acknowledgement. The ISA and the ISC segments are received and recognized. Zero means no acknowledgement request, one is for an acknowledgement request. ISA 15 is the test indicator, T for test, P for production, most will be production. ISA 16 is the component separator, which separates the data for the sub-element components. This commonly defaults to a colon or a greater than symbol. The GS information is contained in the second line of our envelope. Anytime you're using Atomsphere, and we would list the values like this, once again, our general rule of thumb is that the sender is identified first and then the receiver. So remember, you're Boomi, who's the receiver, and we're going to use the GSO3 field, which usually is the same receiver field in your ISA interchange ID. GSO7 is a responsible agency code. This is the controlling agency responsible for the type of document being sent. GSO8 is the GS version. This is the code for the version. And as you become more comfortable reading your EDI files, you'll quickly be able to find the elements in the file. 
The Company Information tab is an optional tab where you will enter the address, contact, email, phone, and fax information for your trading partner. The Communications tab allows you to select the communications type being used. The fields you will need to enter will change for each communication type selected. You can identify multiple communication types in one trading partner and specify the one that you want to apply in the different integration scenarios. Remember, EDI, de EDI deployment licensing applies at the trading partner and not at the connection level. The archiving options are similar to the connection operation archiving options defined here. Because the partner components can handle both inbound and outbound documents, there's a separate directory setting for each. The Trading Partner Where Used tab shows processes that reference the selected trading partners. You can open the process to edit or view by clicking on the process name. You can also view the process deployment containing the trading partner by clicking on the link in the Deployments column to open it in the Deploy Processes page. If the link reads View Deployment, then the latest version of the process is deployed. If the text link reads No Deployment, the process is not deployed. So how are trading partners different from standard connectors? Each trading partner component supports multiple communication methods. Notice that we have AS2, DISC, FTP, and SFTP. However, at the start shape, you can only define one communication method per process execution. Looking at more ways that the trading partner differs from the standard connector, each method supports the configuration of both the connection and the operation settings. The data processing options allow you to do broad-based changes to the document before the transactions are processed. Some examples include PGP handling or encryption and zipping and unzipping of files. The FTP method has both a get and send option, each containing a separate data processing options tab. So far we've examined my company, which is Boomi. Soon we're going to need to set up a trading partner for Walgets. So let's examine the sample trading partner and see if we can spot the differences between Boomi, which is my company, and the ABC Corporation, which is my trading partner. Within the X12 standard tab, the basic options exist only for the trading partner. This allows you to indicate if you want an acknowledge to be returned to the trading partner. Within the basic X12 options tab, the functional acknowledgement options specify the functional acknowledgement is generated. These are only used for inbound 997s. Do not acknowledge, which is the default. If this is selected, it will not return a functional acknowledge. Acknowledge functional groups will acknowledge at the GS level. Acknowledge transaction sets. When you choose this option to send your acknowledgement, you will, know, you will not need to send a map. Boomi will automatically generate it for you. The functional acknowledgement options are defined at this level and are only required when constructing your trading partner. The document envelope option specifies how the document sets are grouped, grouped in outbound interchanges. A particular company may want the data to be grouped a specific way. The default is grouped by interchange. A single interchange can have one or more functional groups. We can group by functional group, which means that all the transaction sets with the same message type are grouped together, resulting in a single functional group per interchange. We also can group by transaction set. There is a single interchange for each transaction set. The element delimiter tells Boomi the, how to delimit the fields in the file. Star delimit it, which is the default, is the one we will be using. The segment termination character sets the termination character for the message segments. No line or no end character is the default. Our file uses tilde. 
And finally, the last one is to filter functional acknowledgements. You will check this if you are processing data on a trading partner and you want to process receipts. This concludes our discussion on trading partner creation. Our next section will go over the activities associated with this, where we will download the explore process and create a trading partner.